Okay, uh, so, so yesterday we worked on the multi-grid algorithm. So the algorithm started uh, with computing the residual of an of the matrix. So let's let's go back to the code we wrote by the uh, end of our last lecture. So what the first part is doing is to compute the residual of the matrix. We initialize the R to be a zero vector and uh, for every grid point we compute the R to be the right hand side minus the action of the uh, discretization on the vector u0 right so this is the residual this is b minus a times u0 so in fact uh, I like to actually put this into a function uh, so here so if we put this into a function called residual that'll make the code a bit cleaner. So the residual takes a u0 and b and it should return a r. And uh, we can move this part, actually the whole part, into the residual function. Right, so that computes the residual and we can call this r is going to be equal to residual u0 and b right so the first step of the uh, of the gas uh, of the multi grid is to compute the residual and uh, usually in a regular mul in a regular multi grid there is a before computing the residual we usually perform a few iterations to pre smooth the solution we are going to talk about why do we need to pre-smooth the solution in the general setting. Last lecture we didn't pre-smooth the solution, the multi-grid worked, but let's add this into the multi-grid to perform a few pre-smoothing. And the pre-smoothing is the same as what we performed here. So, so basically perform a few gauss seidel iterations okay, uh, before we compute the residual. So that is uh, we are going to take u0 and uh, uh, perform a few Gauss-Seidel iterations and I'll call this pre-smoothing and then after pre-smoothing we compute the residual okay I don't need any comments here and uh, then we interpolate the residual to the cost grid so because we made a uh, let's make it 5 and 5 to keep the computation cost exactly the same as as before all right okay um, after we interpolate so this is the these two lines line 10 and 11 are interpolation of r to the cost grid in this case because the cost grid actually has grid points that lies exactly on every other grid point of the fine grid Therefore, the interpolation is a trivial interpolation. We just uh, take the value at these grid points. And then, uh, not perform iterations, iterations. Then, uh, we perform iterations on the cost grid. So this is, we performed smoothing on the fine grid. We computed the residual. We interpolated the residual onto the cost grid. In multi-grid, this, uh, this has a special name going... Uh, Interpolating the residual from the cost grid to fine grid, uh, to co from fine grid to cost grid is called the restriction. So this restriction operator is actually uh, this is interpolation. Okay, and now we are at the cost grid. At the cost grid, at the next cost grid, we perform another smoothing operation, right? So this is when this didn't happen. This is. Uh, when we are at the coarsest grid, then uh, we perform gauss seidel iterations. But otherwise, we go into another multi-grid call. And the other multi-grid call, we go back to here, and they w we would be performing the pre-smoothing again, right? So let's 
uh, let's actually make a few breakpoints um, on this and uh, we'll take a look at so we'll make a breakpoint before the smooth pre-smoothing uh, after the pre-smoothing okay and then after we compute after we go into the cost grid and uh, uh, we'll come over here the interpolation before the interpolation after the interpolation uh, and uh, after uh, the post smoothing all right so we will make a few breakpoints and we'll step through the multi grid algorithm to see how it works so again uh, we are going to load the same B matrix we loaded in our last lecture so B is going to be here we are going to make a u equal to zeros the size of b okay and uh, let's start so u is equal to multi grid of u and b uh, so the breakpoints didn't work oh okay so i think i opened the wrong file uh let me see let me save this I think I opened uh, the file from the last lecture, so let's save it to uh, the current lecture. Okay, I'll do, oh, replace it. Ah, okay, so let me make the breakpoints again. Uh, before pre-smoothing, after post-smooth, after pre-smoothing, and uh, after interpolation, after the cost grid solution, and. Uh, uh, after interpolating to the fine grid and uh, at the end of the iteration okay so let's make u equal to the zeros again and uh, do our multi grid so this is in the beginning of the multi grid and our u0 should be completely zero so if I uh, do I am show of u0 I get a blank black image so this is my initial guess now let me uh, continue so we performed a few pre-smoothing operations, only five, right? So now when I perform I am sure, what am I expect to get? I get, uh, do you see a very faint white lines appearing on the screen, right? So what this does, the five iterations of gauss Seidel has smoothed not the solution a little bit, but the solution error a little bit, right? So this is the effect of the smoothing. It, re it reduces the solution error a little bit, and especially it reduces the high frequency content of the solution error. Remember, the solution error is the difference between the true solution and uh, the solution we are getting right now. And therefore, by reducing the very smooth, uh, by, by smoothing the solution error a little bit what I'm doing is the the very sharp content of the solution is going to appear on my screen right okay so now my solution error is a little bit smoother that also in this context mean the residual is a bit smoother so what I can do is I can then compute the residual and uh, uh, and interpolate the residual to my cost grid. So come over here. My residual is now on my cost grid, right? And then if I continue, what am I going to be at at the next time? Which line am I going to be? If I click continue, am I going to be at line 22? I'm going to be at line 3 because I will be calling multi grid again exactly so next time I'm at line 3 again okay and let's look at what is my u0 what do you think is my u0 in this case is it going to be a interpolated solution of what I have here no it is 0 because here what I'm doing is I'm solving the error equation I'm trying to correct the solution I had before I had in my final grid so I computed my residual and I started from zero trying to solve the error equation of 
a times delta x equal to the residual and I started with zero if you don't believe me I am sure uh, of u zero here is going to be completely black it's a smaller image and completely black right okay so now if I perform a, a continue and I finished uh, doing five iterations of pre-smoothing what I get is again very faint lines maybe you don't see it but like uh, there is a very faint lines let me let me multiply by 10 you may see a little better right so it's a you get the high frequency content of the solution but on the coarser grid okay now I computed the residual and interpolate it again to the even coarser grid next time I'm going to be at 3 again on an even smaller grid so of course my u0 is again going to be 0 because now I'm solving the error equation of the uh, 500 by 500 grid right so now I'm at a uh, 256 by 256 grid. Now after the smoothing iterations, let me do I am sure on this again, I get an even smaller uh, image and still these contours. But remember, these very sharp contours on the small image, when I go back and interpolate to the coarser grid, it'll be the smooth portion of the solution on the uh, so uh, go back to the final grid it'll be a uh, smooth features on the final grid right okay so keep going uh, next step I'm at an even coarser grid uh, let me go this for a few steps uh, what is my what is my n now my n is now I'm at a uh, 64 by 64 and uh, if I keep going I'm at I'm at a uh, 32 by 32. Keep going. I'm at a 16 by 16. Okay, uh, here. And uh, now I'm at 8 by 8. So here, if we look at the solution on the 8 by 8 grid, we get something that is uh, uh, like that. <laughs> so it's very hard to. Uh, basically, we get like almost the most uh, smooth portion, like like that, right? So we get the very smooth portion of the solution, and uh, finally, when we when we are at a close enough grid, I think we are at four. Uh, we are at four now, so we'll still go through. Okay, so so when so here right so so n on the final grid uh, my size is equal to four on the coarser grid it's even smaller so here what I did is I performed the ten Gauss Seidel iterations on the coarsest grid and uh, I come over to here so so now I'm interpolating my du to the final grid so my du uh, my du here is uh, let me just uh, type du. So my du here is going to be a 3x3 three three matrix, 3x3 uh, three three array, right? So the boundaries are 0, and this is the only solution I get. So I'm basically solving a matrix equation with how many unknowns in this case? With just a, a single unknown, right? So this is probably an exact solution after 10 Gauss et al. I mean, this is this must be an exact solution even with one Gauss L iteration because I'm solving um, equation with only one unknown and then I'm interpolating this to the final grid and adding the solution to the previous uh, previous solution after after the pre-smooth so what I have gone is I have gone through here and uh, sometimes uh, people use a direct solver on the coarsest grid because on the coarsest grid the matrix is so small that usually a direct solver beats a iterative solver. 